Good afternoon, folks. Thank you for joining Olympus's Inspection 360 webinar this week. My name is Michael Hall. I'm one of the metals specialists here at Olympus. And uh, we're going to talk today about how to sort your scrap efficiently using XRF. So we'll talk about some instrument considerations and some best practices uh, for scrap sorting. We'll kind of take this from the top. I mean, the most important thing is to, uh, is to know your yard and your feed for what your, and what your objectives are. But from an instrument standpoint, uh, you know, we'll start with typically you come in in the morning, the instrument's going to have been charging overnight. Um, they may be in the, in the docking station, or uh, there are also you can get external battery chargers for the battery. I like to take an extra battery with me when I go out into the yard. Uh, you can get several hours of testing on a single battery, and fortunately you can recharge a battery faster than you can drain it. But uh, if you're going to be out in the yard uh, for several hours, it's nice to have that extra battery with you before, so you don't have to go back to the, to the shop. When I get started in the morning, another QC practice I like is to inspect this window. There's a little dust window on the front of the instrument. I want to make sure this is intact, and then also give it a good cleaning. I take an alcohol wipe or a wet wipe, baby wipe, soft rag or lens cleaner to get that window clean. If it's torn or damaged, it's easy to replace. On the Olympus XRF instruments, it's completely toolless. Just pop the release button, peel the window off, put the new one on. The windows are consumables. We send extras with you when you purchase the instrument, or you can buy more from our online shop. But I want to keep that window uh, clean and intact. Different kind of instruments have different kinds of, of windows. There will be clear ones. Those are proline. Uh, this instrument here, single beam instrument, has the thick reinforced uh, capped on window, which is nice, particularly when you're doing uh, things that are sharp or turnings. We'll talk about some turnings later on. Uh, and then there's also intermediate solutions like the Kapton mesh, which is reinforced to protect your detector on your instrument, uh, but give you maximum analytical performance. So either way, always check that window in the morning. If it's damaged, replace it. If not, make sure it's clean to start up. The other thing I like when I'm out in the yard is to put on a wrist strap. This helps against uh, drops and damages. The instruments do have a military standard four foot drop test. But that wrist strap goes a long way to, to keeping it in my hand throughout the day. You can get holsters, but at the very least, I like to have that, that wrist strap. Once you've got the instrument charged, ready to go for the day, the next consideration is to think about um, what kind of materials you're going to be testing in the, in the yard that day. And you might have different sections of your yards, ferrous, stainless, coppers, aluminums. And you might want to send a different instrument to different sections of your yard or different settings for different sections in your yard. So one of the first considerations I think about, if you're a large yard and you've got more than one instrument, you might want to think about which instrument you send to different places. So uh, there are instruments that are designed uh, for single beam analysis. This is the Vanta uh, L series, or you all see our Vanta Element as well, would be a single beam instrument. And these work really well actually for almost all alloys uh, out there. You can do your stain most of your stainlesses, your ferrous, your, uh, your red metals, your high temps, your super alloys. Most of those can be done in a single beam test. That's quick, fast, easy to go. So if I'm sending an instrument to a section of the yard where all they're going to be doing is shooting stainless all day or high temps, uh, or they're going to do a lot of turnings that are stainless, I might send them out with a single beam instrument with that capped on window. It's going to give extra protection against uh, turnings or sharp objects. If you're going to be doing a lot of aluminums or things where you need to, to uh, do fine sorting on phosphorus and sulfur, then you're going to need a two beam instrument uh, such as the Vanta M series or the C series uh, Vanta Element S going to be doing those two beam alloys. If you're not sure, you can always check our grade library. Our grade library is, is clearly marked, color coded, which alloys you can do, single beam, two beams. You can get this from our website or get this from your technical sales representative in your, in your area. We also have a little alloy guide slide rules that you can throw in your pocket and take with you uh, if you're unsure of the specs for, for different grades as you go out. Another thing I like to take with me is uh, some type of little small Dremel or rotary grinder. These things work well if you have cladded material or coated material and need to get a coating off for that. Again, battery operated because you're going to be out in the yard where, where you don't have easy hookup. From there, I'm going to start looking at my instrument and think about the test settings that I want to use. Again, based on the type of material I'm going to be analyzing and where it'll be at in the yard. 
So if I look at the instrument screen, pop this up here, let me just draw your attention to a, to a couple things. First of all, let's think about test times. Okay, so I got a stopwatch icon right here on the, on the bottom, or I can pull it up in the menu tray, get to test times as well, my beam settings. Okay, so there's a couple options here on the screen. So again, you see these discussion here about single beam, two beam, smart sort. If I'm gonna be working out in the yard again with mostly stainless steels, high temps, super alloys, these are all single beam alloys, and I can put this in single beam mode, and I'm probably gonna put in single beam no LE. This is gonna help minimize the impact of dirt. Out in the scrapyard, lots of dirt, you wanna minimize that impact. Single beam, no LE, I can sort most of my stainless. Let me just take a quick test and show you how that works here. All right, here's my 316. Three oh four. Nice and fast. Two seconds. Good chemistry. Good precision. All of these type of stainless alloys that I just shown, these are all single beam grades, so I can test them fast. And I don't want to worry about them whether they have cutting fluids on them or dirt from being out on the truck or in the yard. So that single beam works really, really well uh, in those as in those contexts. The other option here is to use the smart sort. The smart sort feature uses the analyzer to make the decision on whether you need to do a single beam or two beam test. It makes the decision on your, ha on your behalf. So if it's a fast grade, do it in a single beam, it'll stop for you automatically after, after the first beam. If it's an alloy that needs both beams to do the grade matching, maybe you need to see that magnesium, see that silicon to sort that grade then it'll automatically roll into the second beam. So I like to test with this smart sort setting um, if I'm gonna be seeing a lot of different feedstock out, out throughout the day. If I'm gonna be shooting aluminums one minute and then stainless the next, red metals the next, back to, back to, to ferrous and so on, the smart sort makes the decision for me to do a single beam or two beam test as I move along. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's a simple grade, 6061. It's an aluminum. This is a single beam grade. You can see the instrument starts to test, exact match, stops after the first beam. This is pretty simple, okay? Take something like a, a low alloy, like an aluminum 1100. Not many micro alloying elements there. You see an exact match in the first beam right away, but it's gonna roll over into the second beam to confirm. I didn't have to make any decision. It did it on my behalf, exact match. Again, three seconds, four seconds now. You're sorting. Correctly sorted 1100 from 6063. That's a common mix up on other instruments, but uh, sorted quickly here on the Vanta. Same sort of thing, exact match right away, but rolls into that second beam to confirm if needed. So, in terms of beam settings, again, if you know you're going to be working with high temps, super alloys, you can go single beam, no LE. If you're going to be working with that aluminums, though, you need that LE setting you might want to go with a smart sort to make the decision on your behalf. This maximizes your efficiency. You take short tests when you can get away with them, take longer tests when they're needed based on the alloy so you don't have any costly mix-ups. The other thing we want to look at on the analyzer uh, before we get started is the grade match settings. You can see the scales icon here, the idea of comparison or, or matching. For the Vanta, I recommend 1022 down the top. This is sort of a set it and forget it sort of thing. Instruments will come shipped this way, but if it gets changed inadvertently, you can change it back, 1022. We have a quick, quick start guide. You can get them on the internet, get them on YouTube, or talk to your sales rep, local rep, we give you these quick start guides to go on. The key thing that I want to draw your attention to is our quick sort library, which we've developed for the Vanta. As the name implies, this is to help you sort as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So you want to make sure you've got that quick sort library checked as you go along. So once I do these things, most days I'm going to have this set up already. I won't have to go through this exercise every morning, get my grade match settings the way they want them, get my, my beam settings the way, test times the way I want them, and I can just sort of set them and forget them and go out into the yard. So let's take some, let's do some quick, uh, quick shots here. I already showed you 1100 versus 6063. Easy to separate those two on the, with our quick sort library. The, Industrial specs are already there. You can see those on the screen, right? Green means good, uh, red means bad. Any element that's out of spec, right? So here the silicon's running a little high in this sample of 5052. 
we'll mark that in red, draw your attention to it. If you're ever not sure what's, what, uh, what the industry spec is for a grade, we show that on the screen in a nice clear uh, green means go, red means bad type, type illustration. We can sort even uh, tight grades like 2014 versus 2024. Notice it's showing up the top two matches here, 2014 and 2024, brings them up, automatically rolls into the second beam to sort that out, and she gives you an exact match for 2014, which this is a sample of. I already showed your stainlesses here. These are pretty simple. Get a couple of maybe some oil and gra gas grades. This is a P91, chrome molly. Some super alloys, this is a hast alloy. All of these common commercial elements are, are pre-programmed into the instrument. Another thing I like to do uh, to optimize my testing is change my element display. I can customize this just like I do with my soundtrack on my playlist, right? Press and hold, I can drag elements around. And what I've done here is I've put the chrome, nickel, molly, uh, and cobalt, the elements that are most valuable, I put them up at the top. That's what I'm paying for. That's what I'm, what I'm buying on. Uh, so I like to put those elements where I can see them. Again, shoot a Hastelloy here. And you can see your chrome, your nickel, your molly. No cobalt in this Hastelloy, but you can see them listed there at the top. You can quickly change the display to sort by concentration, just by touching. So from highest to lowest, here's my nickel and my molly, my chrome, or in that customized order based on what you need. It's all easy to change this on the instrument. If all you're doing is sorting grades, you know, throwing, throwing aluminums in this barrel and that barrel, okay, no problem. You can just put the grade match at the top. But if you want to do fine sorting on chemistry, then you can um, display those elements there, which you're, which you're paying on. So I've got a lot of samples here today. We can just shoot through some things. It's a 3000 series here. This is easy to sort. You see it's closely aligned with the 5086, but once it automatically rolls, smart sort rolls into that second beam, we can sort that 3003 exact match there on, on the sample. Some molded aluminum here. Sixty eighty two. Exact match, nice here. Get your ink and L's. Here's a place where you really want to get your chemistry right because you're going to be paying for that nickel, selling on that nickel. Same thing, red metals. This is a leaded, leaded brass, nice match. Here's a beryllium copper. Electronic grades, we can do those. Pure copper, 14,500. When it comes to turnings, same sort of thing. Shoot these. This is a, what we got here? This is a 300M. This is a modified 4340. Okay, a little extra vanadium in there. You see the vanadium is marked. Okay, already programmed in the library. Got those, those grades in here. This is a 909, ink another ink canal here, high nickel. When it comes to turnings, uh, this is a place, like a lot of things in life, where it's more about finesse than it is strength. Obviously, those turnings uh, run the risk of cutting that, that dust uh, window in the front. So you just need to just place it down. You don't have to go Superman style down on these, just place it on. This is a titanium 6.4. If I'm going to be sorting a lot of turnings throughout the day, I'm going to be checking this window periodically, particularly if I'm using uh, one of the, the thin proline windows. If I've got the thicker Kapton window, then this is pretty resistant. It's hard to break this window. But I'm going to check it periodically as if I'm doing a lot of turnings. The Vanta on the C series and the M series has a shutter to help protect your detector even if you do break through that dust window if you're doing a lot of turnings. This is an HS-188. This is a, another Hastelloy. You can see the high chrome uh, and nickel there, but also the high cobalt in this uh, Hastelloy 188 alloy. The 
Give me just a second here, I'll get you my instrument screen back up. There we go. So there is a chat feature uh, in the lower right corner. You can put in uh, questions or comments as we go along. We'll take some Q&A here in just a minute. Uh, but go ahead and be putting your questions there. My colleague will pass that along. Another thing I wanted to mention in terms of sorting scrap efficiently and maximizing your profitability is some of our reporting features. So um, one of the things that's, that some yards like to do, you know, the truck comes in. Uh, they're gonna, gonna weigh the truck, give a bill receipt. You can use our panoramic camera to take a picture of the load or maybe the, the, the bill sheet, customer account number. You can put that metadata in to um, the analyzer to be associated with those tests, who the customer is and the load, maybe the weight. And then we even have an averaging feature. You can take multiple tests and average the results. And then you, Use our reporting feature, make a nice report there for your customer, picture of the load, picture of the samples, chemistries, maybe run uh, sample multiple samples in that truck load, calculate the average at the end, and generate a nice report. You can get that report directly to a PDF. You never have to connect it to a computer. Just stick a USB in the top of the analyzer. Export your results directly to the USB. Or if you have Wi-Fi in your yard, you can actually support the results wirelessly to your network. Yard manager can be sent in front of the computer, generate, grab that report. So this makes, gives you efficiency, right? Truck pulls in, get the weight, take a picture, scan it, do some averages, get the chemistry, send it to uh, yard manager wirelessly. You got your PDF, the truck dumps and pulls on, and you've calculated your weight, your chemistry, and, and, and your bill. So those reporting features help make your scrap sorting more efficient. Again, never have to connect it to a computer. Just use your USB or wirelessly export it uh, to, your, to your network. So with that, I'll see what kind of questions are coming in. What can I tell you today? How can I answer questions? Yeah, so one of the questions that came in is about testing for carbon. So if you are getting in carbon steels, XRF is not the solution for, for carbon testing. We can do a lot of carbon grades. Here's a, here's a low alloy 4140. I already showed you the 300 in, which is a 4340, another low alloy. But in terms of just uh, pure carbon steels that only differ in the, in the carbon content, we're not going to be able to sort one carbon steel from another. This is just a, you know, a pure... Uh, alloy here, pure, pure uh, ferrous. Yeah, one of the questions is it was about a, a spot size or analysis size. So in general, these instruments have a, a spot size of about the size of a dime, about a 10 millimeters in diameter. It's a general spot size. And the nice thing about that then is that if you've got something that's coated, you don't have to grind very much material off to get a, to get a nice spot. We do have a small spot feature if you need to really get something small if you're trying to maybe do the weld or something like that. But for general scrap sorting, it's about the size of a dime, and that works pretty well. That way you don't have to grind too much, um, and you get a good representative analysis that way. Just show some grades here as we shoot. One of the things I, uh, I didn't mention earlier, you take something, again, talking about that smart sort feature on our beam settings where it makes the decision for you on how much testing you need to do. This is a 400 series stainless steel. See right away, matches it to 410, 1620, okay? These are very similar grades. The difference here is the sulfur. And so it puts you in the 400 series right away. If that's all you need to know, throw it aside and go on down the road. If you need to see that sulfur to separate 416 from 410 or 420, it knows to automatically do that and roll into that second beam. Again, one of the advantages of that smart sort feature so that it makes a decision on your behalf. If you're not sure what these, when we look at these, um, Beam settings, you see they're designated here, beam one and beam two. If you're ever not sure, most of the elements in your alloys are gonna be there in beam one. Okay, if you're ever not sure, you can find these on the analyzer. We give the element suite and show you there. You can see that most of the elements that you're, you know, the, the usual sex, iron, copper, nickel, cobalt, those are all in beam one. Your micro alloying el elements, chromium, tungsten, moly, zirconium, niobium, these are all in beam one. This is why we can sort most grades with a single beam test. The only elements that are in the second beam that are uh, um, 
critical is when you're doing the magnesium, the aluminum, the silicon, and phosphorus. The phosphorus and sulfur can be really important when you're really trying to do narrow sorting of your stainless steels. You don't want to blow that, that sulfur number and get penalized. So there you would need your second beam to get that phosphorus and sulfur. Um, or if you're doing your aluminum alloys, you want to see uh, your, your magnesium, then that's also in the, in the second beam. In general, um, you know, bigger isn't always better. Longer also isn't always better in XRF. So in general, you should be able to take a quick test, two or three seconds, uh, and be done. The one exception sometimes is to, to get that trace magnesium, you might need a little longer in that second beam. But in general, these can be fast. You can see I had this set to two seconds. And even with my aluminum alloys, I can uh, hit most grades. Let me get my screen back up here for you guys. So here again, one beam test, quickly identifies 1100 correctly, rolls into the second beam, stays on 1100, okay? But other, a lot of these aluminum alloys, 6061, you can do this as a one beam test, no reason to be tested longer, keep it going, get your sorted, time is money. Cast grades, also no big deal. 355. One of the reasons you don't want to uh, test longer than you necessary, obviously time is money, so you want to test as short as possible. The other thing about that second beam is uh, um, that's where you're going to get yourself in trouble with dirt, right? So I was talking earlier on our, on our beam settings. If I'm not going to be working with aluminums, going to be working with stainless or high temps or super alloys, I really like that single beam no LE because that minimizes the, the impact of, of dirty samples. Dirt, silicon, sand, it's gonna impact your reading. And so I try to avoid that second beam whenever it's not necessary. Again, that's one of the advantages of the smart sort. But you roll in that second beam, the sample's dirty, didn't get clean, didn't get grind well, then the dirt might impact the reading and you might drop your grade match there, okay? So cleanliness is important. Um, this is primarily an issue with your aluminum alloys where you're trying to get that uh, magnesium or maybe the silicon for some cast aluminums. Doesn't look like we have any other questions coming in. So again, I want to thank you again for joining uh, the Olympus Inspection 360 webinar today. This recording will be available online for on-demand watching in about an hour. So you can come back to this link and view it again or send it along to your team at your facility. Thank you again for choosing Olympus.